Hello. You're muted. <laughs> there we go. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm okay. I'm always muted. <laughs> so I unplugged my camera to because last time it worked when we plugged it back in. Uh -huh. So I unplugged it and then I'm putting it back in. Okay. There. Good. Switch back and forth. I have been running all day today and I actually had dinner, went to sit down on the couch and realized it, that 10 minutes after that, it was time to, to start the meeting. <laughs> and I haven't had a minute to catch my breath all day. That's some, some days you run, we're on modified block mm -hmm. and on B days, I have no break. I have a 30 minute lunch and classes from eight o'clock, eight fifteen to four o'clock and one lunch. That's crazy. On A days I get an hour and forty five minute conference though. Wow. <laughs> so A days are my favorite. <laughs> yeah. I believe it. Oh, here's our oh, here's mama. My mother. So you're ready to go? I'm hoping so. Yay. <laughs> Great. All right. Um, I figured again, like always, I would wait till about 10 after. Okay, that's um, good. Welcome everybody and then turn it over to you and I will make you co-host just in case you need okay. to hear anything. Um, all right. Okay. I don't remember how we checked to make sure that I could switch cameras. I guess it's, let's try that. Oh, okay. That works. Yeah, All, right. Awesome. All right. So I'll just start letting people in. We had a nice number reserved, you know, the, the pre-registration. Oh, good. So usually we average about 25 people per meeting. So we'll see. Kind of nervous, you know. <laughs> Why? It's just us. I'm I mean, we're all, I know. we're all friends here. Hello, everybody. Hello, I'm using a different computer so you can actually see I'm a real person, not just a name. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> but I don't have any workspace anywhere, <laughs> unless it's at the kitchen counter and I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. I'm sorry I missed last week. I was very curious, but our, it was our daughter's birthday and I kind of put this aside and was thinking of her, I guess. So well that's uh that's more important. That's okay. And you can always catch up with the videos that we have. Yeah. Which have been wonderful. Yeah. Mom, you look like you're in an earthquake. Your <laughs> is like all over the place. And you're muted, so I can't hear you. Oh, good Lord. Okay. <clears throat> You're still muted. <laughs> Mute. There you go. You? Now we can hear you. Yay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You look nice. I do. Yes. Thank you. I haven't. I. This is the first time I'm sitting down to relax. So, hi, Jessica. Are you okay? You look a little. You know. You were muted. So you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Tough conversation with the kids. So that was it. Oh, two Jessicas. Hi. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. Um, all right, so let's wait a couple minutes, see who else pops in. Mom, I got your message, but I have not had a minute. This is literally the first time I'm sitting down, so. It's okay, we can talk later. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome everybody. Thank you. I don't know how many of you guys um, have your supplies and plan to to stitch along. I wanted to, but I haven't even had a minute to gather my supplies all day today. Um, 
We just needed the, the, the string and needle and the papers, right? Yeah, and if you have, if you can't do the book, you can actually do the cover. Do, uh, the neurographic thing that we did, I didn't bring it. It's at home. But the neurographic one, that would make a great cover, you know? Oh, cool. Okay. And I mean, so it's, I love this project because I make my kids work in sketchbooks, you know, at least once a week, sometimes twice, depending on what we're doing. I, I've tried to do the sketchbook thing when I was live in class and they don't do it. So. I even, I even <clears throat> gathered because I was gathering today. Oh, what I sent home because when we started this year, mm -hmm. I we had to make art packets for kids, and I sent supplies for them to do pro project as well as to make their own sketchbooks. That's why the little sketchbooks right became little sketchbooks instead of the big ones that I do in class. So got it, got it. Mm. What, what size paper were we supposed to start with? Whatever you have available. Yeah, oh, and okay. anything that's available to you. And I'm doing the smaller because you can see it when I demonstrate. Um, Got 18 by 24 here in front of me. Well, that's huge. That's What's big. That? <laughs> that, that, the 18 by 24, that's the size that I would actually use for the bigger sketchbook covers. So if I'm making a big sketchbook, I use the 18 by 24 for the cover itself. Oh, okay. The layer, sorry. Or I could cut it in half. No, just fold it in half because that's what we're doing anyway. Well, I need to make a smaller sketchbook. Well, that's up to you. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. I'm getting ready for a sub tomorrow. They, I have, I'm testing two AP classes. Oh, for, um, yeah, I, it is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is more work to get ready for a sub than for me to live in my own mess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Luckily, though, my sub is the teacher that retired last year, the other art teacher, so he kind of knows my mess. So oh, that's good. Totally. That's good. Mm -hmm. Completely good. Oh, we're getting a nice group today. That's good. I just grabbed some computer paper. So it's eight and a half. That's by perfect. So just that is perfect. That. Do these all get folded in half? Yes, you're going to fold everything and it's going to be four stacks of five. So oh. this, this is 20 sheets of paper, but four stacks of five. And okay. when I say stacks, it's going to be sandwiched. Oh, so I that, got it. Okay. Yeah. So should we do that before you start? You can. I, I, well, yeah, because when I start demonstrating, if you have your 20 sheets, go ahead and fold them in half. Um, that way, when we start sewing, you're at the same spot. Well, I don't have a lot of fancy materials. I just have um, a pair of pointed scissors, a, a piece of yarn, and a, a very thick, heavy needle. I don't have I, I modified <laughs> because I didn't want to send needles home to my kids at home. Right. So I modified the lesson and I did a video for my kids at home where they would mark. I don't know if y'all can oh. see that, but I had them on the video. I had them mark and would cut little notches out and you can either use thread, any type of string. You can do the same binding, but oh, it's not okay. as tight. So I, I did modify and I was going to show you all that if y'all were interested. Okay. I'm curious how you do the cover. Is it separate or is it um, just the top? It's a separate sheet. Okay. The cover is a separate sheet. Great. What size does the cover have to be in relation to the paper? The cover is going to be bigger. So I mean, are we going to be folding a, uh, the same size paper as cardboard, folding it in half? Or the back and front cover separate? When, when we make our cover, so this is a 12 by 18 sheet, okay? This is regular size drawing paper, like 80 pound sulfite. And then this is the 12 by nine size sheet. So my cover sheet is going to be, and I don't know if y'all can see, you know, the twice, twice the size, but we're gonna end up cutting it if, to, to this part for the cover. But, but is, the cover, is the cover going to remain in one piece folded or is it two separate? Yes, 
it's going to be remain remain in one piece and we're going to wrap it around like a i don't know if you all remember we used to have to cover our, our books our textbooks yes. yeah it's so we're kind of covering sure. this like we did our textbooks oh, Some, with the, you know the, the older the younger text. people yeah yeah and um, that was such a great skill <laughs> it it was a great skill but um and we're i'm also going to talk about you know. We're aging ourselves with that brown paper bag cover. Yeah, <laughs> but they make fantastic covers as well. Yes, they do. <laughs> so, and yeah, I'm going to show, there's several, there's so many modifications and I've been doing this for about three or four years. I can't even remember. And it's, it's just a project that I enjoy doing because my kids go away knowing how to make at least a sketchbook <laughs> and it's just fun. Yes. Well, I love it anyway i don't think it's aging us i think those paper bag covers for the books are wonderful oh they are I love them. all over nobody them and nobody's gonna now. get you uh -huh. and in the the workshop that i went to that taught me this it was stephanie holbeck and she's a teacher in the houston area and um, we actually when we came to the shop to the to workshop she already had these pre-laminated she stenciled them it's just craft paper. She already had those made for us so that when we came to the workshop, we could we didn't have to design the cover. But I took this idea and I made it so that I could make official lessons for my kids. Oh, that's great. So but you can have you you can do colorful wrapping paper as a cover. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can make a cover out of anything as long as you have a um, laminator. Oh, so you know what I love to use um, the the fancy rice papers the, the oh. made rice papers as my covers yeah that would be pretty yeah for my for my kids at home that didn't have a laminator with these i told them to go to the dollar store and mod podge them and it it kind of protects them i mean not perfectly but the laminate's going to come off too because my kids use them all the time you know what you could also use is the um packing tape just you could wrap, wrap the tape in strips around the front. Yeah, mm -hmm. I made a purse like that. I wove a purse and then used tape to seal it. <laughs> I carried it for like three years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I've seen people put paper underneath their kids while they're painting, and then they take that and make paste papers out of them. So they could use that, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's limitless. Oh. I just, I when I did it I did, for my kids, I made, because I have different classes, and I wanted them each to do different things on them. Yep. Oh, my goodness. We actually, Jake, I'm putting you on blast. I can't believe we have a male in the classroom. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Hi, welcome. <laughs> and if you haven't already um, folded your sheets, like I said, um, fold them in half and have four stacks of five. Shelly, you went invisible. I think I saw you come in. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. There you are. <laughs> Hi, everybody else. I see some new names. Welcome, welcome. We have 708. I think I'm going to introduce you and then I'm going to run and get my supplies. Okay. Um, wait about two more minutes and then I'll do that. I have a question. No, mom, you can't ask any questions. <laughs> You've exceeded your questions. <laughs> yes. Um, on a sheet of drawing paper, is there a right side and a wrong side? There is not, is there? I've never noticed. Um, they both sides, there's not one side to me that's slicker. And they, I mean, I guess there there is. Depends but on I've drawn paper. on both sides. Yeah, I would say depends um, on the paper. 
Yeah, on this paper that I'm using, there's one side that does have a little bit more slickness and there's more tooth on the other. But uh -huh. again, I've drawn on both sides and never, it, I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> it was just a curiosity that passed through my mind for a second. Now, I do know that if you're buying paper by the sheet, like a specialty type paper, it does have a, a more toothier side. But with the drawing paper that I get from Blick, I don't, I don't think it matters so much. Yeah, mine is just from a drawing pad that I'm working with, pulling out the sheets. I think like watercolor paper has two yeah, different watercolor. Sides. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Okay, it's 10 after, so I'm going to get started. Um, welcome everybody to Thursday night's um, Art Teachers Art Club. This is a special group just for us art teacher folk in the world because art teachers are people too. Um, and actually, I was thinking the other day, our teachers are teachers too, not just people, but, you know, sometimes we get left out of being considered, you know, in our own buildings that we don't even get thought of as, you know, teacher teachers. Um, like we, we are the ones that get dumped on most often in the buildings for whatever reason. I don't know. But anyway. I have an anecdote on that topic. Okay. If you would like to hear it. Okay. Uh, all right, go ahead. <laughs> okay. In my homeroom, as an art teacher, I had a homeroom, and I used to put up a word of the day when the kids came in early to keep them busy, take copy the word, look it up, write a sentence, so on and so forth. And one day, one of the boys called out and he said to me, why are you doing that vocabulary stuff? You're just an art teacher. <laughs> and boy, did I lace into him. <laughs> yes, just art teachers. You're only an art teacher. Why are you doing vocabulary? Wow. Well, in, in honor of uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, I, I want you all to know that I appreciate all of you for everything that you do <laughs> and all the above and beyond that we all do for our schools and our students, et cetera. So. And, and we appreciate you for putting this all together. So we Absolutely. have a place to go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So um, I'm just going to do a, a quick little plug because after today, I don't have any sessions booked right now. So if anybody wants to volunteer to um, to run a session, we can you can email me. Um, we can discuss a date and a topic and whatever. Um, but as of right now, this is it for the moment. Although I was considering doing. Um, a session or two on our best practices and thinking, well, what has been your most successful project of this school year? Maybe we can all just come together, have a drink and schmooze and just discuss and share our ideas instead of, you know, just so that we don't have to miss a beat. I, I would hate to lose our momentum because then it's harder to get back into it. So if that's something you would be interested in, um, let me know. Um, you could say so or put it in the chat if you think that would be a good idea. And uh, otherwise I'm still looking for ideas for other sessions. Having said that, um, I am excited to, to do this project tonight because um, I love doing handmade books and the stitching and, and someday I wanna even try all the Japanese style stitching and, and all the, the fancy schmancy stuff, but um, I agree that sketchbooks are a phenomenal tool. I haven't been able to have success with my students, but I, I love making them for myself. So um, thank you, Norma, for volunteering to run this session. And I will hand it over to you. And then I'm gonna quickly go run and get my supplies so that I can participate with you. So I'm gonna actually spotlight you so everybody can see you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, take it away. All right. Um, my name is Norma McClung. I teach high school in, in Tyler, Texas, uh, Tyler High School. And I have ninth through 12th grade 
mixed classes. They, they like to stack my classes, especially with the painting and drawing. But for all of my classes, I make them do sketchbooks. And the reason is because we're required in our district to have two daily grades a week and three assessments this year. Next year, we're changing. So, but, you know, for the past few years, that's how it's gone. And when I say two daily grades, one of the grades that I get is from, I make my kids draw every week because not, not all of them will go and practice drawing. So I have a technique grade and every week they draw from observation. Because of the pandemic, they've been drawing from photographs instead of observation that I used to take and put still life objects on the table. And then we'd just spend 45 minutes studying the objects and drawing them in their sketchbooks. But we're going to be making sketchbooks. And these are some, I've modified this quite a bit from when I first started doing this because of the pandemic and I had to send things home. And in the kit that I would send home, I have 20 sheets of paper, the 12 by nine size sheets of paper. I'm going to switch so that I don't have to hold things up so y'all can see it. <laughs> All right, so. Okay, so 20, 20 sheets of paper and I just bought these bags from Amazon. I included a binder clip, which I'd never expected to get back. I would do like two, and I'm not a sewer, so I don't know the real term where you pull the thread to your, you know, you stretch your arm out and pull it twice. And so I just kind of wrapped that around my finger and taped it onto the inside of the bag and a big sheet of paper that would make the cover. So this is what I actually sent home. I didn't send needles home with my kids. I didn't send um, scissors, but I did send a kit home so that they could all make sketchbooks and it would be the, the half size sheet, right? So when we were doing this, I, I did videos, but you'll have your 20 sheets of paper that you've already folded in half. And get some of this out of the way. All right, so you have 20 sheets of paper already folded in half and you're gonna stack them like a sandwich so they're all sandwiched on top of each other. Okay. Now, if you wanted to bring in the math, you could actually bring in the math to do this to make it tie into your other curriculums. I didn't bring in the math when I was teaching this for the, my students at home for the simple fact that I'm not there to show them how to use the ruler. And a lot of times my kids weren't good at rulers. So I had them measure just visually. So the very first thing that I did, 20 sheets of paper, I didn't send push pins home. I figured they would have push pins, 20 a uh, piece of cardboard. And you can do this with any scrap of cardboard. All right. So a piece of cardboard, your 20 sheets of paper, and your push pins is what we're going to start with. The supplies are a pulse through thread, which I just get at Walmart, and it'll say a pulse through thread. And I tried to zoom in on this earlier, but it wouldn't focus, but it just says a pulse through thread. And I buy these needles, this just big eyed needles so that the kids can thread them. All right, so when I'm punching the holes for the sketchbook, I'm gonna use the first one that I make as my template so that all of my holes match up. So if I've got them all folded, I might take the first one out and I would tell my kids to actually take and mark in the very center. So they're just kind of eyeing it. And like I said, you can actually take and have them measure things, but I have them visually do this because I'm not there to help them. I tell them to go about an inch from the edge. You have the middle, an inch from each edge. And then in the center, which I can tell that this one's a little bit off because I didn't do it first. I did it first. And then I'll do two um, more dots so that I have a total of five dots. Can I ask it because I ran out to get my paper. Are we doing yeah. one signature at a time? We're going to punch all the holes and then we're going to sew two signatures together to begin with. And then the third, we'll switch stitching to bind the third and fourth signature. So are we putting the first two one inside of the other? They're going to be stacked. So when you fold your papers, if you have all of your papers and you never would let your kids do this, <laughs> if you have all your papers stacked and you fold them over, that's what your signatures are going to be. So you're going to have four stacks of paper. Okay, because when I'm thinking stacked, I'm sorry to be such a pain. 
I'm thinking stacked this way. So no. they're actually one inside the other. One, they're sandwiched inside. Okay, got it. So yeah, but when I when I tell my kids to um, when I show them this, and again, I've simplified this, especially had since I had to do it at home. Uh -huh. I've been doing it like this at school because it's much easier. And when I do this in my classroom, I don't actually have them all doing it once because the sewing, it's, it's not hard to do. I mean, I can get one done. If the holes are punched, I can sew it in like 15 to 30 minutes, you know, right. but the kids are, don't think like me, I guess. <laughs> so I only do a table at a time when I have them sew it. Okay. So I'm going to take one page out of the first signature I'm working with, and I'm going to go ahead and mark five holes. So I tell them to go in the, the an inch from the side, approximate inch. And again, you can actually have them measure and use the ruler to do this. But my kids at home, I, I wasn't there to help them measure. So I, I, I made it simple. You're going to take your cardboard. And the reason we use the cardboard is because we don't want to damage their tables or anything. And you take your push pins. And if you have two, that's great. But if you only have one, that'll work as well. But if you have two, you can push the first hole in. You leave that push pin in there. And then you just take the second push pin and punch through the holes. Okay. When I get this, and this is what I'm going to use for my actual template so that all of my pages match up when I'm sewing. I'm going to put this right back into the center of my, my first stack because this is my first stack of pages right here. Right. And I'm doing it sideways because my camera doesn't show everything. <laughs> so I'm going to put that there. I'm going to make sure that my edges, the bottom edges are lined up. I'm going to set it down. I'm going to punch through and I'm going to leave that push pin there. Again, if you don't have more than one push pin, you can use the same one and punch through, but go through all of your pages. And then I'll take this first page out. You're going to make sure that you've punched through the back. Okay. Okay. And you're going to puncture all four s signatures. You've already done your first one, but I'm going to use this as my template so that all of my holes match up. So I'm going to set this one aside and I'll do my next one. So a signature is one set of five folded pages. Yes. And I use that as the vocab word, okay. you know, because I do vocabulary words. Yes. And so book binding signatures. Um, I can't remember what, el what else. So this is my second signature. I'm going to stack my first page in there because that's what I'm using as my template. And I'm just making sure that my bottom is lined up. And I'm going to poke my needle, my punch push pin through. If you have two and you push it through, you can it keeps it from shifting as you're going. And my students always ask, well, why can't we just put, push it with the needle? It's just a lot easier if you're not trying to pierce your book as you're trying to sew it. Yeah, it crinkles and increases the pages yeah. too. So I'm going to check and make sure that my um, holes are already punched through, which I can see. I'm going to go shut my blinds because I'm getting a glare. Okay. But I'm going to push um, punch my third, my fourth, third signature. But hold on one second. Sorry about that. I noticed that my pages were being washed out because the sun's coming through. All right, so... Open that. And I'm oh I'm always making sure that my bottoms are lined. Okay. 
And then you just stack all of them together. Stack four stacks of five. Well, we're not keeping them separate signatures. We're just stacking them. Yeah, they will be. They, they will be four total stacks, which are your signatures. Okay. Okay. But I took the first one out because that has my pattern on it. That has my template that I'm making sure that all of my holes are, will be the same. One, two, three, four. Five. And then this is my last stack of four, of five. And then make sure that they're all there. All right, so when you get through punching your holes, I'm going to mark where my holes are on the outside so that y'all can see. I'm going to mark it in Sharpie so y'all can see. <laughs> All right, so I can actually see where my holes are on the outside. And the reason I'm marking this, and this one's a little bit off, but that's okay, is because when you're starting to sew, you want to make sure that your signatures are lined up and your mark, your holes are the same so that you can your, your binding is a little bit tighter. And the reason I'm marking this is so that you can see that this, I think this stack right here, I have upside down. And you don't have to mark this. You don't have to do this step. I'm, I'm just doing it so that y'all can see. It's not a bad practice, but. All right, so. The reason I marked it, like I said, was because if you look at this, let me get the glare. All right, do you see how this one signature, the dots are off? Yeah. If I just turn it this way, they match up. Oh because I didn't measure exactly, and I, my kids, bless their hearts, they won't. <laughs> so I might, if you mark them, you can see, oh, that one's off, just turn it upside down and it'll be fine. Okay, now for those of you that um, didn't get the needles and you don't have, how I altered this for my kids at home is instead of doing the push pin, I had them measure, you know, do the same measurements and then take a pair of scissors and just like, and you could actually have them draw a line straight down here, like a fourth of an inch, no more than a fourth of an inch, less if you can make it, but have them draw a line here and tell them not to cut past that line. And all they're gonna do is notch that out. And the reason they would do that, they're gonna have to do that with all of their pages. You might only be able to do two or three pages at a time, but have them just, make little triangle cuts to that line and it's gonna make little notches. And I actually had bound a book like this with loose thread. Um, it was loose, but it was it still worked. It still had a binded, they still had a bound sketchbook. But you can do this with your 20 sheets and instead of having them, if they say they don't have a needle, this is an alter, alternative way that they can actually bind their sketchbook with the yarn or thread. So. Once you cut those little notches out, you'll have the holes and you can just push the thread through it. Okay, so if you don't have a needle, you can still bind your book. Okay. Is everybody ready for the next step or do I need to wait a minute? I'm ready. Okay, so when you start binding, you're gonna only use two signatures to begin with, okay? So you're gonna take your binder clip. The reason I say you need a binder clip and for class organization, I actually had numbered one through 30 
binder clips for each class. And so when, because you're not going to do this all in one day with the kids, you know, by with passing out, I give them 20 sheets of paper and, the, you know, I tell them to fold everything and then you just have them clip with their number. So they, it's theirs. They know it's theirs. They have their name on it, of course, but you can say, Oh, 15, that's Jack. You know, this is yours. And I have them just stored in milk crates. So you're only going to use the first two signatures. You're going to go to the center of each signature and you're going to clip the pages together. So we're clipping the middle ones. Yes, you're clipping the middle pages, the middle so that um, we're using two signatures and we're clipping the middle pages together. So that's open on each signature. And I have a, like a, um, like I said, the wide needles, the big eye needles. When you're threading your needle, you're not going to double the thread because this is upholstery thread and, it, and it's really strong. So all you're going to do, and you get the big, if you have good eyes, you can get the small needles, but these seem to be a little bit stronger than the skinny eyed needles, the small eyed needles. So all you're going to do is thread it and then you're going to tie it in a knot. So I'm just pulling it through and I'm going to knot it about three or four times because it's strong enough that you don't have to double it. So all I'm doing is knotting it three or four times and tying my thread to my needle. Okay. How much thread do you need? Um, I don't, <laughs> if you're a sewer, you know how you take and you, you hold the, the thread at the end of your fingers and you stretch it out and go to your shoulder and yeah. then you do that two times. I, I have, I don't know how big that is. <laughs> two shoulder lengths of thread. Yeah, like two shoulders and I'm going not to the same arm shoulder. Yeah, but going to the opposite shoulder. That's usually 36 inches. Seven and do that, do that two times. Mm -hmm. Two times. Times two. Two times. Oh boy, that's a knot, bird's nest not waiting to happen. Well, um, <laughs> it, and it gives them plenty of thread in case it does get tangled. Okay. Can you tell but, us that again for those of us that were lagging behind? What what am I telling? The length, the length of the thread. Where do you put the needle? Do you put the needle in the middle of your chest and put your arm out or? No. Um, when I measure the thread, I, you know, I'm holding it in my fingers and then I'm stretching my arm out. And then the, the other hand is just pulling it. So like two, two, um, and let me measure how long my thread is <laughs> so I can give is you an <laughs> estimate. <laughs> Hold on. Is it 32-ish inches or 74-ish inches? It's about five feet. Okay, that's an answer. Thank you. That's great. Okay, so okay. that's arm to arm. That's hand to hand. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And I, I've never measured it. I just, you know, visually they showed us. <laughs> Okay, now when I'm doing this, I said you needed a, I don't think I said on the instructions you needed a small piece of tape. Um, if you have tape, what I will do, this is extra tape, extra thread because a lot of times when they're binding, it gets, it gets um, knotted. Mm -hmm. This gives us enough thread so that we don't have to, we can cut it off, undo it and redo it because that happens a lot. So it gives us enough thread that if we make a mistake, we can cut out our needle, undo what they messed up, and then re retie it to the needle. So what I do when I'm starting, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to wrap it around my fingers a little bit, which shortens it. Okay. But I want this extra thread because I, I know my kids. <laughs> All right. And it gives, if they mess up, this also gives us a way that we can go back and connect if we need to. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take this. I have a small, just piece of masking tape. And I'm going to tape my thread down and I try to cover it so it doesn't get tangled. Okay. So I'm taping it towards the top of my signature. Wow. Brilliant. Can we see the edge of the needle again of how you tied it? I'm sorry. All I did Thank was you. like tie it in knots. I don't. So, so it's really close to the needle, right? 
Um, yeah, and, and it shifts okay. sometimes. Thank like you. if you get it tighter, <laughs> it can be tighter. Like I just tightened it okay. up, so now it's tighter. Thank you. I just wasn't sure if it was a loop or really close. Thanks. No, I knotted it like four <laughs> times. Okay. All right. And vertical and horizontal are also vocab words that I have with this lesson because I tell my kids, if you're standing your book up, all of your horizontal lines are going to be on the outside. All of your vertical lines are going to be on the inside. And hopefully I use blue thread with this. All right. So the vertical lines, when you're done sewing your book, and I didn't use blue thread, but you can still see the thread. All of your vertical lines, if your book is standing up, are going to be on the inside. All of the horizontal lines and this book is bound, so you can't really see it, but all of the horizontal lines are going to be on the outside. Okay? okay. So if we have our needle, we, we have it clipped together in the center, and it's standing up, you're going to go into this first hole right here. The book is standing up. You're going to go down and come out of the second hole. So, and I always tell them if it's standing up, it just makes sense to me and the kids get it. So I'm going to go into my signature, my first signature. And yeah. they're going to, they're, they're really, they, they always want to do it. The, they want to go through a hole and pull it all the way. I try to tell them that if you'll pull it and then go back out to the second hole, close your book. And then pull your thread. You can keep this in where it's not getting tangled and just pull your thread. Okay. okay. So there should so, be there should be a tail. The tail is taped, the, the loose is taped. Right. Okay. You, you go into the, the top hole, you go down and you come out. And if your book is standing up. On the inside, your line is going, if your book is standing up, your, your line is vertical. All of the binding is going to be horizontal on the outside. So you've only gone in, gone into one signature and came back out the same signature at this point. Right. And the binder clip, <laughs> it, it took me a minute to figure that one out. Okay. So All we're right. on the second hole. We're on we're out of the second hole on the outside. Is everybody good? Yes. Okay. So this the first two signatures we're binding together and then we'll change stitches when we're done. So if we're on the outside, we're gonna go into the second signature. And again, I, I try to tell my kids to and I can't, my hole didn't go all the way through apparently. So if, I have weird dots here, sorry. Sometimes it doesn't match up and that's okay. You can fix that because the pages don't. All right, so I'm on the inside of my second signature. I'm not going back up. I'm going to continue to go down and I have weird dots here for some reason. I don't know why. But when I'm trying to punch through, I have no idea why those dots are there. I'm going to go ahead and just punch it through where my hole should be. Okay. So I'm going to come, I'm going inside. I'm going down. Please ignore these dots. I don't know why they're there. I'm going to come out. If you shut your book, you can, all you have to do is watch this thread here and pull your thread. So I'm going back and forth between the two signatures and pulling it. And then I'm going to go into, back into the first signature. And you'll notice that when I go back into the first signature, I'm kind of making a broken line. So I have a stitch here. There's no stitch here. I'm going to go down and have another stitch. So again, I tell my kids to come into the signature. If you'll go back out and close your book. All you have to watch is this and keep this from getting tangled. So 
On the outside of your book standing up, it's horizontal line. On the inside, your lines are going to be vertical. And right now I have a broken stitch because I'll fill that stitch in when I go back up. So my book's standing up. I think I did something wrong. I think I did something wrong. Can you okay. Can you pull it tighter? Is this supposed to be skipped or the top one yes. is supposed to be? It's, oh, it it's going to be skipped because when oh. we go back up, we're going to finish filling that line in. When you're first starting, you're going to have a broken line. Right. When we go back up, it's going to make this a solid line. Okay. Got it. Okay, so I'm on my outside, I'm gonna go in because if it's standing up, I'm always going horizontal outside, vertical inside. You'd think by the end of this lesson, they would know the difference between horizontal and vertical. Uh -huh. And again, I have these random dots on my book. I don't know why I have the markings. So when we get to the top of the signature, do we start going down then? Yes. So if you're looking like I'm on this side, again, I don't know where, why I have dots there, but my thread is skipping. I'm on the outside, so I know I've got to jump back into this signature. And I think that I messed up there because of those random dots that I have. It, I mean, it'll be fine. But I know that if I'm on the outside and my book is standing up, I've got to jump back into the first signature. So I'm going to take this and just go back in. And then when I'm on the inside and I'm not, do, I'm not closing the book so that y'all can see, this is a broken line. I only have two stitches. It'll end up with um, one, two, three, four stitches total. So I'm coming in here. When I go back out the same hole, it's completing this line. So when I go back out that hole, vertical lines on the inside, this is going to be a solid line up. Uh, okay. When we go back up, uh -huh. are we doing the same thing by going, repeating the horizontal lines again yes horizontal lines on the inside it's going to complete the line vertical lines jump you from signature to signature so we're doubling the stitches yes signature to signature going back up and that's going to make it more tighter right and a lot of times the kids when they'll say miss miss i messed up if you see the thread vertical on the outside, you know that's where they messed up. And that's why I have so much extra thread so that they can cut it and retie it because it's easier to cut the needle off, pull the thread out, and then retie the needle than trying to put the needle back through. So I'm leaving it open. So I have this broken line. I'm always going to go out the hole that I have already sewn through. And then as soon as I get it in, I usually, like I said, I try to tell them to close it because you, it keeps you from tangling. This is a great lesson to identify kids with input processing. <laughs> great. Okay, so now, now, when you get to the top, yeah. like I'm, I'm at the second hole. When I get to the top and I come out, I'm not going to go back into this hole because we still have to bind our other two signatures. So when I get back and I come out of this hole, stay outside and I'll show you what to do. Oh, I went too far. Okay. Stay outside. Stay outside. Okay. And that'll come out at the end. It will, I'll show you how you take care of that. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm on the outside. I ended it. I'm on the outside, right? Yep. Uh -huh. I'm going to take one of my other signatures because we're now going to bind this third signature to the first two signatures. So I'm going to make sure that my holes are lined up and that's, you know, when I marked it so you can see that the holes are lined up. It's not perfect. Again, if you want to get the rulers out and make sure that they're all measured accurately, that's a good idea. But when I sent them home, I didn't make sure it was perfect. I just told them this is how you do it. I told them they could, but all right. So I'm going to clip. These are my first two signatures. I took my clip off and I'm going to open my third signature to the center and I'm going to clip the first two signatures closed so that the only opening I have is in the third signature. So the first two signatures I've completely closed. And then the only opening I have is this third signature. Let me know when we're good. Does it matter what side the clip is on? It should be like in the center of the third signature, closing everything. I mean, the opening. Should the clip, should, um, the, the, tail of the thread should always be on the outside, right? Yes, the tail's on the outside. Okay. So we add the other signatures to the opposite side, the opposite yes. signature that's- The tape that's side is side. what I'm calling the front, right. and then I'm putting the signature on the back. Got it. So that, and then I clipped it. Okay. All right, so now if we're binding the, the third signature to it, this stitch is a lot easier, and I tell my kids it's the best stitch <laughs> because it's fun or it's not as confusing. So, and whenever I'm hold, sewing this, I'm always holding it comfortably. I'm going to go into the, the, the top hole that I've already made, and I'm going to come out just like I had been doing. So I'm going, I came in, I'm going back out, and then I'm going to pull my thread. This is the top one of the new signature. Yes, I'm at the top. I went in, I jumped into the top of the new signature right here. Yeah. I went down, I came out. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to turn my book kind of sideways because, I, and if you're left handed, you might turn it where you, the, I, my left handed students turn it backwards than how I turn it. But since I'm right handed, I'm going to hold it with my left hand. I'm going to kind of squish it together. I'm going to go under the stitch. There should be two stitches that you're going under. I'm going to go under it and I'm going to pull my thread and I'm just kind of knotting it on my book. And I'm going to do that two times. So I'm basically just tying my upholstery thread to the stitches that I've already done for my first two signatures. And then I'm going to go back into the same hole that I came out of. And as we're putting the third signature on, we're going to have a solid line going down. It's not going to be a broken line because we're tying it around the stitches we've already done. So I'll go in. I'll go back out. Pull my thread. And on the outside, I'm going to loop it around two times to the stitches that I've already done. I'm going to go back into the same hole. And again, my, my line is solid. And I'm going to go back out. And pull. and loop it around twice. And the second and third, the third and fourth signatures get attached way quicker than the first two. So is go the back inside in. of the new signature solid? Yes. As we're sewing the, the third signature on, we're not going, we're not jumping back and forth between signatures. We're going out. So if 
if I had just come out of this hole here, right? If I had just threaded and I'm pulling out, so my thread is on the outside here, I'm gonna stitch, I'm gonna knot or go under the two threads right here that were my first two signatures binding. And you do that two times and you'll go back into the same hole that you came out of. So I'm gonna go under that two times and I'm tying it around the thread that bound the first two signatures together. And then I'm gonna go back into the same hole that I came out of. And that's why I'm having a, a solid line on the inside of the third signature. We are recording this, aren't we? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. I just have to ask because believe it or not, I have to leave to go to my retirement party. So I just wanted to check. Oh, oh congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy. All right. Thank you. You're thank you. Retirement. <laughs> when you get to your last hole, stay outside. Don't you you still loop it around, but you don't go in back into the same hole because we've got to attach the fourth signature. So you are so connecting it. Yes, because we already have a solid line on this third signature. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around. And that hole there, because I have that random dot, is a little bit off. So I've, I've got, you can see that I have, and I, I want to say this is Copic or Copic stitching. I'm not positive, but you'll see that I have um, like binding on the outside and all of my vertical lines are on the inside, mm -hmm. right? When I'm connecting my fourth signature, again, we marked our holes so we can line it up and make sure that the holes are all marked, are all matching. I'm going to remove my binder clip, open the fourth signature to the center, and I'm going to clip it just like I did the third signature so that the only open pages are the middle of the fourth signature. And I, I again, attached it to the back of the, what I'm calling the back of the book. And I'm going to go in to this, and I've turned my book upside down so that I can work this way. I'm going to go into that hole there, come out and wrap it around twice, go back in. I'm going to do the same stitch. Wait, can you go back and show that again? Okay. So I'm on the outside. I've already finished attaching my third signature. Okay. I'm going to stay outside. Right. I'm going to get my fourth right. signature. Yep. Make sure that my holes line up. Yep. I'm going to open my fourth signature to the center. Okay. I'm going to clip it open yes and then i'm going to do the same thing and again since i'm right-handed it's easier for me to hold it with my left hand than try to work backwards so i've turned my book over i'm going to go into this hole the uh -huh. very first hole and then come out the second come out the second wrap it around two times and go back in And you can wrap it more than twice if you feel the need to. And go back in the same hole I came out of. Go out the next one. Wrap it around two times. Is your upholstery thread waxed in some way, treated? I don't think, I think it's, I, I don't think it, ha, it, it's not stiff at all. Oh. And the book binding material, the book binding thread that I've ever used was really waxed and stiff, yeah. Yeah. but this is like really soft. Okay. I mean, it, it's not soft like cotton thread mm -hmm. is. It, it's, it's a lot stronger, yeah. but it doesn't rip like cotton thread. I would have yes. already broke it with as tight yeah. as I'm pulling it. And the, the upholstery thread just seems to work really well. Right. And I probably, um, the measurements that I gave you for the length of thread, that was for a full-size book, not the half book that I've, I sent home. Oh, okay. Um, 
It's extra. But again, I, I always do do extra because of the a lot of cutting needles. Now, it, and this is a problem that I've encountered. Remember how I did a, a lot of extra here? Say you get to this point here and you only have this much thread left, right? You only have a tiny bit that you can't go back up and meet it. You have this extra thread. All you do is untape this. In fact, I'm going to do that. Even though I have plenty of thread, I'm going to show y'all. It's a problem that I encountered and figured out. So if I didn't have enough thread right here to go back up to tie it off here, all I would do is untie, untape the tail that I have. I would thread another needle. So I, I untaped it. I'm just going to thread another needle. And there's a little knot here, so I'm just going to cut it off. And I would just tie it just like I did the other one, like two or three times. And I don't have to tie it as much because I'm only going through one hole. So if I didn't have enough thread here, and a lot of times, it, and with the bigger books, it usually ends up somewhere in the middle. Since I didn't have enough thread here, I know that I've got to meet this thread, this right here, down here. So I would go into the last signature because my line is not solid. I would go into my last signature. Come out the same hole that this thread is through because my needle's there. And all I'm doing is meeting my needle, my other needle, because, you know, if I was out of thread. So I would meet my needle. I would still wrap it around two times just because apparently I have trust issues with it sticking. <laughs> And then I would just tie these two threads together. And that's how you end it. You well, yeah, and that's how you end it so that there's a binding across all of them. And I should have went ahead and wrapped around twice there when I was go. coming back into meat, but I didn't. Yeah. Um, but that way you have all your stitching is on the outside here. And all your vertical lines are on the inside. And pull it nice and tight, as tight as you can. And then you just tie it several times. So assuming we ended with enough thread, we un untape the other end and just tie knots? Yes, just untape it and, and tie knots into it. Okay. And But again, I had kids run out of thread. And so I'm just going to tie this. And when I knot it, I knot it like, again, I have trust time. issues with it staying. So I yeah. knot it like five, six, seven times. <laughs> And, you know, it doesn't take much, but I just want to make sure that it doesn't come unbound. And another tip <laughs> that I learned, because, like I said, I make my kids do work in their sketchbooks. And so what I discovered just this year was two things, a bookmark. And a bookmark is just any thread, yarn, anything you have. So if you take this and you double the, the height, plus a little bit of extra of your book. I'm going to turn it sideways again. You have two bookmarks that your kids can mark what needs to be graded. Because oh. I tell them, I have 170 sketchbooks to go through. I don't have time to go through your whole sketchbook and find what I need to grade. <laughs> so when you do this, like now your book is bound, it opens. And the reason I like this stitching is because it lays flat. When you're drawing, you can lay your book flat. Even when it has the cover, you can lay the book flat. You don't have to fight with it to, to be flat when you're doing your art or your sketching. But all you're going to do to make your bookmarks is I'm going to take, so you can see the binding right there. I'm just going to put my, it's looped or doubled. I'm going to put my thread through here and then feed it through the loop and it just kind of knots it onto that thread. And now I have two bookmarks. We're going to put the tape and I don't know if I told y'all duct tape, but if you have this bookmark, you can have your kids mark what they need to grade and that way you can find it easier. Okay. 
Right. How much extra when we trim off the thread? Should we leave any extra or cut it tight, cut it close? I don't I don't cut it all the way up. Again, I have trust issues with it coming undone. I leave a tail because we're going to cover it with duct tape. I don't know if I listed that. It's not a necessity that you have duct tape. But the second hint that I learned just this year is you don't always have to have gray duct tape. I have, like I said, 100 and probably 60 kids this year mm -hmm. in seven different classes. I ordered colored duct tape. So my first period is all green. If, if we haven't gotten our covers on it and I find a green sketchbook, I know it goes to first period. That's a great idea. This year I didn't do that. But what I did for my kids is colored vinyl. And on the colored vinyl, you probably can't see this, but there's a little block of violet here. I marked all of my kids' sketchbooks with this little block of vinyl. But before I bind them or before I cover them, this year I'm going to have colored duct tape to cover the, the outside because sometimes it takes a minute for us to get the books covered. You right. can still use the sketchbooks. They're just not covered. Okay. All right. So with the duct tape, all you're going to do is take and shred it, of course, because that's how you do it. So I don't even use scissors. I just tear it. So I'm just going to go like the almost the whole length, but not totally. I'm going to do this sideways because it, you can see it better. All right. So I'm going to take duct tape and and I usually help the kids with that. I will hold the tape down for them and I'll tell them to put the book standing up the binding part in the center. So if I'm holding the tape down, it keeps it from shifting. And I tell them to put the book kind of in the center. So not end to ends, just short of each end. Of not end to end because it'll it'll wrap around the pages. Right. And this is just for extra. And then I tell them, I'm usually holding the tape and I'll tell them, just let it fall um, towards me or towards you. And then you can pull the, the duct tape around and make it smoother so that now if this is just extra like I said it's extra for the strength of it mm -hmm. and I mean my I have kids that came late and they didn't make a cover because I just got them and their sketchbooks look just like this but they still have a working sketchbook with a bookmark okay okay so this is a sketchbook um this will work. I, again, this is a new addition because I don't like thumbing through. I mean, I don't mind thumbing through their sketchbooks, but when I'm grading so many, I don't have time. <laughs> so this is a bookmark. Now, when we're covering it, I don't have a design cover. So I'm just going to show you how to uh, cover it with just a plain sheet. Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So I when you're back here for real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Norma. Um, oh, I was okay. asked to end um, at by the very latest 830 today because the um, Mario, who's the chair of NICADA, needs to use the Zoom for uh, an emergency meeting at 830. So um, okay. we have to end by 830 tonight. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, we should be done really quick. Okay. It's not going to take that long. Okay. All right. So when they're decorating their sketchbooks, you're going to take, I folded the big sheet of paper in half. So this is a 12 by 18 size sheet. I folded it in half. So it's just folded in half. I'm going to take my sketchbook. I'm, I'm going sideways. My apologies for that. It's okay. I'm going to push the sketchbook. I'm going to butt it right up against that one fold that I already have. I'm going to fold my cover over and then I'm just going to kind of pinch. The reason I'm pinching this is so that I can kind of get an idea of where the spine's going to be. So I kind of have an idea of that's where my spine's going to be. Now is okay. this instead of a piece of cardboard? If we have cardboard, would we use cardboard? You can, I don't cover it with cardboard, but you could use cardboard for support. So this is for a soft cover. This is a soft cover, but you're welcome. You can, in fact, she used cardstock to put inside to cover it up and it gives extra support. But you can put cardboard in it to make it a hard back. You could cover it with materials. 
with the, if you have the cardboard support. Okay, so when you're, and you know, this is all decorated and personalized to them. So you're going to take it. Um, I pinched it to figure out where I'm going to fold it. I took my book out and now I'm just going to finish creasing it. And I try to line the edges up and then make my crease harder. And you, you don't cover it until after it's laminated. Okay, so if you're using a laminator, you're going to fold your book cover in half after it's designed. You're going to run it through the laminator. Then when you cut around the edges, when you open it, the inside is not going to be laminated, just the outside, because the glue won't stick to lamination. Okay. So when if you're doing it laminated, it'll come out like this, and you just trim and just remember which part is your spine, and you don't ever cut the spine off. You only cut the edges. So if this is the spine, you would take and you would cut around all, all three sides, but you would leave that little bit of a tail right here on the, 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 the spine of the book. So you laminate it folded, you take this and cut the lamination off so that it will open and your front and your back will be laminated, but not the inside because you're, you can't stick the glue to the lamination. Oh, I get it now. Okay. So I'm cutting the three edges off. If you cut the, the wrong side, you can tape it. I've, I've had kids cut the wrong side and I just use clear tape. So now when it opens, and this is like a craft paper that she just stenciled on, my binding, there's this little bit of a tail here, and that's, that's, it's just part of it. Okay. Okay. So this is what you would cover it with. Um, again, the, the kids that I sent this home to, they don't, they don't have access to a laminator, so I just had them modge podge over it. Okay. All right. So now that I have my... Um, crease here. I'm going to set my book into it and open it. And I'm always making sure that it's lined up with it. So I'll, I'll push it back against it. And again, I'm going to go sideways with it so y'all can see. Then I'm going to open it. I'm going to take and I'm going to mark The edges of my book. So you're centering it. You're not going along one edge. No, because remember I made when I folded it, I folded it so I would have a spine. Right. But I mean, you're not putting the book at the bottom edge of the cover. Mm. You're putting it in the center. No, because we want to fold it over. Okay. Got it. So I, I centered it. I'm going to take scissors. And I'm just going to make a notch where my folds are intersecting. So this is my folded line here. And this is my folded line. This is my folded line. I'm just going to cut an angle to my folded lines. And again, you can cut, um, measure all of this and make it look really professional. But with my kids at home, I notice that if I do something and it looks too good, they don't want to try. So I kind of do it. <laughs> and and I, that probably seems counterintuitive, but I, I want them to try. I tell them we all make mistakes. So I'm going to just cut these notches out. And I'm going to do the top and the bottom. And then my book will fit right inside. And I tell my kids very specifically, when you're folding the cover over, and you'll notice that the top part, it's like a half of an inch shorter than the bottom is half of an inch shorter. It's because we took that half of an inch for the spine. So it's not lined up anymore. Mm -hmm. So I will tell them when you're folding this over, push your book so that it's tight against that spine. 
you're going to kind of do the lift everything up here and you're going to fold the back over so that it's wrapping around and this is a little bit crooked so i would have them adjust it and you don't want to make it too short where it buckles your pages but I'm just gonna make sure that I fold it around. But you always wanna fold your book cover when your book is closed, because if you fold it when the book is open, it's gonna bend the pages and it's gonna warp. So I, I try to do, tell them to do the bottom. All I do is lift up my book and hold it and then fold the page. And then it should you know, be close to even. kind of glue do you use? You can use um, a glue stick. You can use um, regular Elmer's glue. Okay. All right. So now that I've got it kind of folded where it's sandwiched in and I can, you know, I can see that it has the binding. I'm going to open it. I'm going to make sure that the bottom is aligned and then I'm just going to fold this. And I noticed that it's a little bit off down here. So I'm going to just kind of fix it because it bothers me. So I'm going to take and just fold this up. And I always close the book after I make a fold to make sure that it's laying flat. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the back side. Fold it. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing at the top. This is really neat. And then if we don't get to gluing, they still have their book covered, but then I'll show the next, like, and this takes, it's, it's not a one day project. <laughs> we spend a lot of time on this. All right, so I've got this all folded around. And so what I tell them to do now is we're gonna go back and we're gonna make the corners fit better. So if you can see, I have these lines here I tell them to fold and match, like you can take this line and match it to that line, and it's gonna make it like triangular. You can cut this off too, but I've, I've, I've just started folding it because the kids started cutting off too much, and I'm just lining up so that it folds neater, and it kind of miters the edge. So I'm gonna fold it, and then when I put my page back, my front page back, it's just going to kind of overlap and, and contain it. So I'm going to do the same thing with the top. Yeah. So all I'm doing is I'm taking this line here and I'm folding it on top of that line. Okay. And it's going to make it look like the edges, the corners are mitered. So I'm going to put my page back down. So you're not actually cutting it out. You're just folding. I'm not it. cutting it out. All I did was fold it and it kind of miters it itself, I guess. And you can trim again. You can make this look really beautiful. And there's two different ways that you can finish this off. So you could glue this off. I'm sorry. You, you would glue this down. And again, always make sure that your book closes because if you glue it open and it has a buckle, it's not going to lay flat. 
So there's two different ways you can do this. One, well, there's several, you, you can do it however you want. <laughs> two different ways that I've done it. Sometimes I'll take and I have like a card stock and I actually include that with, with my um, packet that I sent home. So I have a card stock and that's just to make the inside look pretty. So you can put this card stock down and glue it down. If your page is laminated, you might have to use the hot glue gun because the cardstock does not want to um, stick, right? So I'll glue this down and it kind of covers up the inside. You can also take, if you don't want to do the cardstock, if you want to put the extra support in it, and then you take this first page and glue it down just to make the inside look prettier. So you can glue it any way. Um, I don't like seeing this. I think it's not attractive. So I, I, I just cover it. You could have them do colored pages if you want, but that way when you open your books, you have in, oh, look, it's my Gmail account. <laughs> you, you've covered it up. Okay. So it just, it looks nicer because if I peel this off, you can see my, and this one was actually cut, but I discovered the folding works just as well. made me think might be nice to do an origami group oh uh, that's because so much math i would not be good at that one well we could do a session doing origami and just playing i i can do one thing and that's a crane and that's the only thing i can make <laughs> I've, I've tried to read the instructions I, I it just doesn't sit well with me am i i just it just doesn't. All right. So this is the covering. Like I said, you can cover it. And I actually send home the covers that they can just put on there just because it makes it look prettier. There they are. So just and cut it just a little bit smaller than what your page is so that it covers up those edges. Or you can take this front page. The only thing about taking this front page, if you do that, you lose pages out of your sketchbook. Right. So but it, it still looks good. It covers it up. And you just, you want it to look nice. So. Fabulous. Yeah, I used a very thick um, watercolor paper for my cover. So the folds are kind of uh, bulky. So yeah. I'm trim that. But this is really great. It looks like I, a I, I, book. I love this. And I cater it to my different classes for art one. I have them do Zentangles, mm -hmm. like they do Zentangle patterning, and I make them go the patterns above and beyond so that the pattern wraps around. So right. the art ones, I make them do just Zentangle with Sharpie. For my um, drawing classes, I do a play on illuminated manuscript where we have green floral. We don't have any gold or anything, but I tell them to include an initial and, you know, an imagery and a border, you know, so I bring in art history, but changing it to fit what I want to see. And so that they're, the project kind of mimics the illuminated manuscript. And I, that's what my PCAs, my pre class assignments, when they come in, I have illuminated manuscript imagery up there. And, you know, the common theme is sometimes you'll see landscapes, you'll see animals, you'll see figures. There's so many different things in a, a pretty letter. And then for my painters, I never painted mine for some reason but my painters will actually, they painted on watercolor paper and it was thick, thicker, You can, but the binding is coming off just a little bit, but they actually painted theirs. So. That was a beautiful. And, yeah, I mean, my, I love, my kids do such a phenomenal job. A great idea. But, you know, they work in their PCAs, like whenever they do plans, I just have them sketch out four ideas of what they want to do for like the cover sheet. If we're not finished with the cover yet, they're sketching their four plans for their cover, right. but they still have their sketchbook bound. The clips are numbered so that even if we're not bound yet, 
they still have all their sketchbook pages. And I can take an assessment grade or a daily grade on how neatly were your pages folded. Because if your pages are folded messy, all of the edges are going to be wonky. So I just have one more stupid question. You there are said, no stupid questions. Yeah. You said you can use the two end pages to glue the cover to it. Yes. So this student here, she I actually have the pages cut, the cardstock cut to cover it. If you look under it, right, there's the folded edges. Uh-huh. And the glue, the hot glue doesn't like to stick. It it works itself out. Yeah. Right. But you can go back and glue it back on. Instead of putting this page here, this cover sheet, you can take the very last page and glue it down. Right. And it just it hides the ends. I'm just trying to, how did you connect? Okay, maybe it's just because I'm, my brain is fried. How did you connect the cover to the book, to the, to the signatures? It's not connected to the signatures. It's not. It's wrapped around the first and the last page of the book. So if you take the book cover off, right? So it's removable. So, well, not after you glue it. Glue, okay, that's, what, that's where I'm getting confused. Yeah, you're not so, gluing the book to the cover, or you are. Yes, we are. How are where and how are you gluing under what the flaps? Okay, the so we already have this all folded over and right. it's wrapped around, right? So you're I didn't glue the tabs. it you, we glued these flaps down. So you did right take the, you did take the two end pages and glue the cover to the end pages yes the the front and the back you yes. and you tell your kids not to do anything on those because those are going to attach the cover to your book Got but it. if you wanted to like cover it with this you're taking yet another page got it okay that's so, what i'm I sorry i did not make that, that clear <laughs> but okay. yeah you'll glue these flaps down and make sure that when you when your kids glue this down with whatever glue they're using make sure they close it immediately because if they glue it while it's open it it makes it buckle okay so I just had you have idea. them what if you if on each end of the four signatures you fold it over a card stock like a colored card stock on each end so you sandwich the signatures between two folded card stocks right mm -hmm. so that you have then you have uh, the end sheet that will of the card stock that will get glued under the cover and then you have the second end sheet to cover the tabs of the cover does that make sense it wouldn't work that way because remember if you put the card stock in between are you talking about just on the outside yeah sewing an extra folded card stock one on each outer outer side so adding Two more sheets of folded paper. You, you could do that. Yeah. And so it would yeah. provide more strength. But in the yeah. middle, in yeah. the middle, you would have like this page right here would be uh -huh. a cardstock page and this page would be a cardstock because it's going to wrap around this signature. No, 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 no. I'm talking about. If you're sewing it, it's going to be wrapped around. So you'd have a cardstock page in this in the center, which is okay. You could do that. You could. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to play with this now. I have to play with it. But yeah, this is awesome. This is I, I love this. And it's not my idea. Stephanie Holbeck is the one that taught it to me. And it's I, I've done it ever since I learned it. You know, the signature thing has always fascinated me. And I've always looked at it and been like, how the hell is that done? And you just completely demystified it for me. And I know this sounds terrible, but some of these, like the college catalogs, mm -hmm. they're bound like this. Really? You can go through and yes, and some I older can. books, they're not just glued, like older books, a nice bound book, you will see these signatures just like this. They're they're wow. in groups. And you know, only old books. I would not do this to a treasured book or anything, but when you're doing books and you start taking them apart and you see the thread, you get so excited. <laughs> That's phenomenal. 
Wow. I, I hope I wasn't too confusing. <laughs> no, no. I, that's why I keep asking questions to clarify because I, something got lost in translation for me. Um, and again, that's the beauty of recording. So um, thank you so much, Norma. This was, this was phenomenal. Question? Sure. And, May I ask yes. you a question? Yes. Is this a traditional method of book binding? Uh, and is it one of many different methods? Is it's one of many. I don't know if it's like a traditional one. I know that if you go on YouTube, you can find if you type in Copic, Copic, C-O-P-I-C, this is the Cop Copic binding. There's a, million different, there's a million different binding methods. Yeah, there's a ton. And this is just one, like I said, because the reason I love this one is the pages lay down flat. If you yeah. bind a book and you bind it where you're attaching it here, your book isn't going to open all the way. And that that's bothersome to me. Like when you're reading a book that has that bind and it, it keeps closing. Yeah. It, it's, it's bothersome. Yeah. And I want my kids to have a flat surface and when the they're page, doing the project. The pages hit at different places on the edges too. Yes. They, they wouldn't all end up in the same line. Yeah. So, yeah. and you know, sometimes it's going to be tighter, but again, it's much better than it always going to that same spot every time. And it doesn't fold that closed. Wow. It's amazing. It's really fabulous. Fabulous. I, fabulous. Didn't, I stopped doing anything and I was just watching. Oh, so I I'm sorry. No, no, no. I wanted to get the overview in my head and then I will finish preparing my papers and when I can watch the recording, then I will go back and, and do it. And, you know, your kids, well, my kids, the ones that really love my class, because I got a lot that are just put in my class. They, they, their sketchbooks are absolutely beautiful, you know, and I love going through them. But thank you, Stephanie, for, you know, let me thank stutter you. my way through it. <laughs> you thank know something? You so much. I can I say something else? Do we have time? We're running out of time, so say it quick. I have an adult group of students. I'm retired, but where I live, I have a little class of about 10 adults, and this might be very good for them. I think that, that would be enjoy. awesome. It yeah. would help certainly with uh, dexterity. And yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So again, I want to thank you again for, for leading us through this, Norma. Thank you so much. And all of you who joined us this week, and well, thank you all. I thank appreciate you. your 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 community and your partnership in this whole endeavor with me every every time we have a session. Thank you. And again, I'm begging if anybody wants to run a session or if you would really like to do just a, a best practices or or show and tell of our best projects of this year, I can do that as well. So um, I'll send out an email begging. <laughs> so, um, I wish you all a wonderful week. And uh, if you have any questions for me, let me know. You, you all have my email. And a um, couple of months will be summer. So we have to think about how we want to do this in summer. Um, if we no, want I'm to. counting days. Yes. It's I 15 days. Too. Absolutely. Well, 15, <laughs> you're closer than I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> all right, everyone. Have a wonderful night and a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Happy Mother's Thank Day. You. To those yes, who are happy mothers. Mother's Day, everybody. Yes, yes happy Mother's Day. Yes. To you all as well. Bye. And Bye -bye. Somebody had asked, 80 pound sulfide is what I use, but you can use any paper. You can use um, typing paper if you wanted to. It's, it's the same. Okay. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. That was great. That was great. Wow. Right. I'll call you in a few minutes. Got to go. Okay, bye.